sound like some Viking music, don't it? <laughs> yeah, gotta get it out the mud, that's the only way to win. Who am I to point the finger like I never ever seen? Being through the ups and downs like the letter in. They don't let you through the door, better kick that again. Cause that's the only way to win. That's the only way to go, gotta get it out the mud. Gotta get it out the flow. Cause that's the only way to go, let's go. Shoot. Lights out. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Shooting Lights Out. Episode two of Shooting Lights Out this season. First and foremost, thank you to everybody who jo who joined me for the debut episode of Shooting Lights Out. Shout out to my good brother Cole Johnson for joining me on the show and talk some basketball with me. Episode two, I got some good ones for you. I got a flagrant fire. I have my first heat check of this season of Shooting Lights Out. And we're going to talk some college basketball men and women because a tournament, a challenge took place that I wanted to dive into. So without further ado, we're not going to take too much on your time on this lovely December 1st, 2023. Yes, we are in the 12th and final month of 2023. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. We're going to kick it off with the in-season NBA tournament. The... Knockout stage has been set, ladies and gentlemen, and how did we get here? So those of you who've been paying attention, you already know this. The Milwaukee Bucks defeated the Miami Heat. The Boston Celtics beat down the Chicago Bulls. Brooklyn Nets beat the Toronto Raptors. Cleveland Cavaliers beat down the uh, Atlanta Hawks. You know, Miami Heat had a chance. They were fighting for us. They were fighting, in, they were fighting their way with, in group. It was a Group B, I think, with the Milwaukee Bucks. Milwaukee Bucks came in there down the South Beach, handle business 131 to 124 to take that one. The Boston Celtics was trying to win Group C from the Orlando Magics, who are who was already three and one on the day. Boston Celtics had to had to put some work in, and they just destroyed the Chicago Bulls 124 to 97. Brooklyn tried to do the same thing as they beat the Toronto Raptors by 12 in Group C. Wasn't enough, unfortunately. Cleveland Cavaliers had a business against the Atlanta Hawks, beating them by the, by 23. Keep moving forward to the other side. More games. New York Knicks with a big win over the Charlotte Hornets, 115 to 91. Minnesota Timberwolves get get by OKC. You know, Den Denver Mavericks. No, the Denver, not Denver. Dallas Mavericks. My bad. Sun's out there. The Dallas Mavericks took care of uh, in-state rivalry Houston Texans by six, one twenty-one to fifteen. Game of the game of the week thus far from the week earlier, down in Sacramento, Sacramento edging out the Golden State Warriors, one twenty-four, one twenty-three. Diving a little more in those games, uh, the Knicks they needed some, they needed uh, an impressive win, and they got it with one fifteen to ninety-one win over the Charlotte Hornets. It's the Charlotte Hornets for goodness' for sakes. There's nothing to write home about there, all right? Timberwolves, they did they handled business getting by OKC by three, 106 to 103. Dallas Mavericks was in a nip and tuck battle with the Houston Rockets. A surprising Houston Rockets, by the way. But they come up with a six point victory, 121 to 115. This one right here, the Kings beating the Golden State Warriors. That was a lot on the line for both of these teams. And Golden State was looking prime and good, okay? Because we're going to dive in this one a little bit more. As you see here, with this over a minute to go before halftime, Golden State was up 72 to 48. 72 48. Kings went on the seven, went on like I think a 7 0 run, and they, were, and they found themselves down 72 to 56 at halftime. But the second half, ladies and gentlemen, second half. The Kings outscored the Warriors 69 to 51. 69 to 51. The Sacramento Kings, led by De'Aaron Fox, outscored Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors 69 to 51. So they took a 17 point lead, outscored the Golden State Warriors by 18. And that's how you get the 124 to 123 win for the Sacramento. Sacramento King, which proves to be a big win. 
win for them in this in season tournament. Because, ladies and gentlemen, here are your final standings of the in season tournament. The Los Angeles Lakers went undefeated in group play, thus winning the West, winning West A. The New Orleans Pelicans, by the way, of uh, the Dallas Mavericks beating the Houston Rockets, took. Was B and then the game that we just talked about between Sacramento and Golden State. Sacramento took Group C from the West with an undefeated record of four and zero. On the East side, Indiana goes four and zero, so they take East A. East B, the Milwaukee Bucks went four and zero, and then in East in East C, you had a three way tie between the Boston Celtics, the Orlando Magic, and the Brooklyn Nets. And by point differential, by five points, the Boston Celtics took it from the Orlando Magic. But that was supposed to be a wild card slot on each side, right? Well, the Phoenix Suns get it over the Minnesota Timberwolves by a difference of 34 points to zero point differential. And that's the same thing with the New York Knicks. With plus 42 point differential, the next best was Cleveland at 29, Orlando at 22, and Brooklyn at 20. So, ladies and gentlemen, the knockout stage is set for the NBA in-season tournament. The number one team in the West, the Los Angeles Lakers, will be hosting the Phoenix Suns. The Sacramento Kings will host the New Orleans Pelicans. In the East, the Milwaukee Bucks, the top seed, will be hosting the New York Knicks. And the Indiana Pacers will be hosting the Boston Celtics. Those games will take place next week, early next week. And here how it goes. On this coming Monday, December 4th, on TNT, it'll be Boston Celtics at Indy at Indiana. And then the nightcap will be the New Orleans Pelicans at the Sacramento Kings. And then Tuesday, December 5th, the New York Knicks face off with the Milwaukee Bucks. And then the Phoenix Suns face off with the Los Angeles Lakers. It's crazy how this tournament is. Fans don't love it. You know, the fans don't love it, especially the whole point differential thing here. Because, like, with Group C in the East, we had three teams at three and one. And they all beat each other. Okay. Brooklyn beat Orlando. Orlando beat Boston. And Boston beat Brooklyn. So they had to find a tiebreaker. And the tiebreaker is point differential. How good did you look in your games? How bad did you beat your opponents? That's how Boston won group one the EC group. Okay? That's how that happened. Pretty much the same thing. That's how the New York Knicks and the Phoenix Suns got in as a wild card. Phoenix was beating their opponents by an average of 34 points, and Minnesota was even. New York Knicks beating their opponents by plus 42, and everybody else was in the plus 20s. So people still don't care about the season tournament. The players do, the coaches do, because uh, if I remember correctly, Joe Mazzula decided to hack a drum it when they played the Chicago Bulls and to have the point differential that he needed, which was a plus five over the Orlando Magic, as you can see here, 27 and 22. So it's, it's a lot of different opinions on the in-season tournament. It's a lot of crazy things going on. But nevertheless, it is what it is. Uh, so far, how the players are reacting to it, how the coaches are coaching, uh, it's been take it's been taken seriously from the players' perspective. From the fans' perspective, they can care less. Okay, they just want to get to Thanksgiving, enjoy their Thanksgiving, watch some games, and let the run be go into the All Star Weekend, and then from there, it's playoff push after the All Star Weekend. That's how the fans' perspective is. They can care less about the easy tournament. There's really nothing meaningful happening. You see this trophy. That's the trophy they plan for, which was that goes to the winning team and some good cash down in, down in Las Vegas, December 7th, December 9th, as you can see. But players taking it serious, so I can't knock them for that. I mean, we'll see if they keep it around next year, what tweaks they'll make to it, anything else. But so far, it's... 50-50 right now for the NCAA tournament for as fans and players' perspectives. It's 50-50 right now. Players playing hard. Fans can care less. But we'll see going forward 
where it stands at and whatnot. All right, so that's what that's going to be for that. Uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, I got a furry fraud to give out because I don't want to, I just don't understand. I really don't. We'll be back. Welcome to Ringside Chaos, the professional wrestling discussion segment of the Bear of Texas podcast. The only professional wrestling podcast in the world where pro wrestling is discussed passionately, with confidence, with great knowledge, and most of all, in the most sophisticated way. So brace yourselves, ladies and gentlemen, because chaos is about to be unleashed. Thing with Tony Khan now being in talks to WWE, I'm going to be honest with you. I spoke to this with Ricky Litwinkowicz, a.k.a. the Master of Mayhem, and he honestly believes that me talking about Tony Khan buying WWEs and basically I'm kind of wasting my time because Ricky believes it's never going to happen. Okay. Now I now don't get me wrong, Ricky, I respect his I respect what he says. He's he could very well be correct, but I gotta be honest with you, the fact that Khan is interested in supposedly buying WWE, I mean, to me that's definitely worth talking about. Now, <laughs> now, I should mention this. Shout out to Ricky, by the way. And I got to mention this, that even Jim Cornette already had something to say. And he said, and I quote, ridiculous to think that could happen, unquote. <laughs> it's a wrestling fan that's been super supportive of Brody Lee as a wrestler and everything that WWE could have done with him and, you know, everything that he could have shown and, you know, offered for the wrestling business. You know, for me, I, just, I wasn't just a fan of Brody Lee himself, like in character. I strongly respected him, you know, as a human being. Like, I had a lot of respect for Jonathan Huber. You know, that's Mr. Brody Lee's real name. So, basically, I had a lot of respect for Brody Lee, Luke Harper, and, of course, Mr. Jonathan Huber. This particular episode was about world-class championship wrestling. And the episode title is, you know, WCCW Wrestling's Lone Star Legacy. And because I am the Bear of Texas... And I do hail from the Dallas-Fort Worth area of the state of Texas. World-class championship wrestling was basically my territory as far as being a wrestling fan goes. Ladies and gentlemen, Ringside Chaos is available on all streaming platforms including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and YouTube. The Playmakers Bar is proudly sponsored by Fanatics. Fanatics, the number one shop where sports fans across the world love to get their sports gear and fan them all. A wide selection of gears from every league, including the NFL, MLB, NBA, NHL, the NCAA, and of course, the WWE. But it is football, basketball, baseball, hockey, even soccer, golf, no matter what sport it is, their sports appeal for every fan of every sport. Fanatics with sports fan shop and a fish and license everything. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Brand. All right, welcome back to Shooting Lights Out. And yes, you just seen the graphic, flagrant fire, and it's the Detroit Pistons. Like I, I gotta talk about Detroit because I don't understand this. Okay, the Detroit Pistons are two and seventeen. They have the worst record in the National Basketball Association. Twenty-seven in points per game at one hundred and nine point six. They are seven in rebounding, which boggles my mind. They had ninth. And assists with 26 and a half, which blows my mind. And they're 24th in opponents' points per game, and they give up 118 and a, 118 and a half. You're good at rebounding, you're good at sharing the ball, but you can't put the ball in the bucket, and you can't stop nobody putting the ball. I don't understand. And here's, here's, what, it, and here's what it gets worse. Okay? Here's where it gets worse. This way it is. They have lost 16 straight games dating back to October 30th. Okay, to make it even more egregious, I said October 30th, they have lost every single game in the month of November. 
They lost to Portland, the New Orleans, Phoenix, Golden State, Milwaukee, Philly, Chicago, Atlanta, Cleveland, Toronto, Denver, Indiana, Washington, Los Angeles Lakers, and the New York Knicks. There's not one team on that list that I just read out that you've seen twice. They have played 15 different teams in a month of November, and they lost to every single one of them. How the hell did you lose to the Washington Wizards? I don't know. You lost to the Chicago Bulls. Nobody knows what's going on with the Chicago Bulls right now. You lost to the Portland Trailblazers. Nobody knows what's going on with the Portland Trailblazers right now either. You have lost. You have went 0 and 15 in the month of November. This don't make no damn sense. 0 and 15. Now, when I look at this team, you have K. Cuttingham, who was the number one draft pick. You have Jaden Ivey, who was a top pick. Jalen Durham was a top pick. Isaiah Liv was a top pick. Monty Rim is your head coach, and he is a damn good coach. But you're two and seventeen. We we said give them two to three years. Three truck gonna be something to play with. Apparently not, because you're two and seventeen. You ain't win a damn game in the month of November. You're going into the month of December on a sixteen game losing streak. This don't make no damn sense. Kade Cunningham giving you twenty two points a game. Seven seven assists a game. Looks like he doing his part. So I'm not going to get on him. Jaden Ivey, where you at? 11, basically 12 points a game. And that's it. I need more, Jaden Ivey. We talked about you a lot. Your mom's the head coach of the Notre Dame Fighting Irish women's basketball team. I'll get to them in a minute because they played in and they played in the challenge with the Southeastern Conference. So I'll dive into that. Talked about you. We know you can shoot. We know you can hoop. Where is the game at? Need more than 12 points from you. Jalen Durham, let's look at you. Jalen Durham, I need you. Same thing with Jaden Ivey. 12 points. Excuse me, 12 points a game, but you give him 11 rebounds. I can work with the rebounds. But we need more than 12 from the center. You got to have more, man. You just got to have more. Jalen, Jaden Ivey, and Jalen Durham, y'all need to help Kane Cunningham. Kane Cunningham is giving you 22 points a game. You see this? Kane Cunningham doing his part. He's giving you 22. Jaden Ivey, you got to give me more than 12. Jalen Durham, you got to give me more than 12, man. Even though you give me a double-double. Appreciate the double-double, but you got to give me more. I need, I need more than 12 points, man. This team, is t- this team has the talent, and it's, it doesn't make sense. Uh, how this team is abysmal the way that it is. It doesn't make sense. Okay? And I'm just sitting here just wondering, like, what the hell has happened to Detroit basketball? We see the drive is like, man, Detroit killing it. In the last two drives, Detroit been killing it. They 2-17. and 17. They 2-17! and 17. Don't make no damn sense. They don't. I, I'm... I'm, I'm bothered by this. Okay? We talk about Kay Cunningham, Jalen Dern, Jalen Ivey, Isaiah Stewart, a veteran. You want to give me 11 points a game? Marvin Beckley third. You have not been what you everybody thought you was going to be coming out of Duke. You want to give me 10 points a game? You want to give me 5 rebounds a game? Really? Really? Kevin Knox, we thought that was a big, that was a big get for them from New York. He ain't Eight points a game, nine points a game. Isaiah Livers, you're supposed to be doing something. Eight points a game. James Wiseman ain't doing nothing. Barely playing. He be barely getting 12 minutes a game. He's playing. He's giving you five points a game. This don't make no sense. It it I'm I'm done founded by the Detroit Pistons, man. With all this talent that they got, and it it is it, it, it's not showing up. It's just not showing up. I don't understand. Somebody who lives in Detroit, a uh, Detroit Pistons fan, get at me. Let me know what's going on with Detroit basketball because I could have sworn. Give them two years, they're going to be making some noise. Not saying they're going to be taking over the lead, but they're gonna be, we're going to look at Detroit like, yeah, that's what we expected. 
This is not two and seventeen is not what we expected. Go back. Two and seventeen is not what we expected. We didn't expect a sixteen straight losing streak. And damn sure we didn't expect you not win a game in a whole damn month. A whole month. From November 1st to November 30th, you have lost every game in the month of November. This don't cut it. This just don't cut it. But I need to know what's going on in the month of, with Detroit. I just need to know. And then your upcoming games, you got Cleveland at home. That might be 17 straight. Then you got Memphis, okay? John Moran still suspended. We won't know the, the health status of Marcus Smart. So, yeah, it might. It, December 6th is a game that might snap the losing streak. But then if you don't snap that, you're coming to an where arena to the Orlando Magic, who is, like, one of the hottest teams in the NBA right now. So we'll see. Then you got Indiana at home, 76ers at home. Then you go to the 76ers at Milwaukee, at Atlanta. Before you get Utah on December 21st, which could be a win. Before you got back-to-back games, home and away against Brooklyn at Boston and finish off the month of December and the month and the year of 2023 against Toronto at home. As of how things working right now, December 6th, December 18th, December 21st is like the likeliest that y'all might can get a win. That's three games out of the whole month. Detroit. Uh, we need better. We expected better from Detroit, and we're not getting it. It's a damn shame that Detroit basketball and the fans of the great of the great city of Detroit is suffering this to the Detroit Pistons because they don't know how to freaking show up. It is a damn shame. It is a crime for an organization like this to do this to their fan base because they don't know how to show up. It's a damn shame. It truly is a damn shame, man. So you know what? Let me get off this fragrant fire right here. End it right there. We'll be, be we'll come back. We're gonna talk some college basketball. The Playmakers Blog is sponsored by Paramount Plus. Paramount Plus, mountains of entertainment. So much, so much to stream from shows and movies you can only catch here on Paramount Plus. Whether it be from CBS, BET, Comedy Central, Liquid Loading, and so much more. The new home of Showtime. Watch Showtime original series, movies, and sports when you sign up for Paramount Plus with Showtime. Catch exclusive originals from Paramount Plus such as Star Trek, Strange Wars, The Family Stallones, Halo, and so much more. You also can stream live sports like NFL on CBS, the UEFA Champions League, the Masters, and the SEC on CBS. Paramount Plus, you can stream up to three devices when you create an account. So Paramount Plus plan starts at $5.99. If you hit that link below, you can get a free trial. Paramount Plus, mountains of entertainment. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Into the Net FC. Kylian Mbappe just all of a sudden finally understood his role, and I think he finally understood that everything Kylian Mbappe has accomplished already, you know, there is still a hell of a lot wait, waiting for him in the future. Kylian Mbappe is only 24 years old. He has accomplished so much, and you know what? Kylian Mbappe has not even reached his prime. It- Finally seeing, you know, the Marcus Rashford we have been hoping for for such a long time, you know. But, you know, this game, you know, after after everything Manchester United has been, you know, doing lately, you know, th- this was actually the ultimate test, you know, to see if Manchester United, you know, all, honestly was all of a sudden for real. I, I explain this. The United States, maybe they have to suffer this loss as a lesson to learn to prepare for the future. Because four years from now, the World Cup is in not one, not two, but three countries. The United States of America, Canada, and Mexico. Into the Net FC is available on all streaming platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and YouTube. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Shooting Lights Out. 
We got some we got uh, NBA. Though. I'm not done with the NBA. I'm going back to the NBA for my heat check because my heat check is coming from the NBA. But I got to get my college in here because we had a great, we had our first Emerald ACC SEC challenge. This the inaugural year for that. Uh, the ACC stopped they uh they challenged with the Big Ten and the. SEC stopped their challenge with the Big 12. They came together. So it's all within the South and the Eastern part of the United States. So the men's and women ACC versus SEC challenge took place this week. And this dive into it. We're going to start with the men. And the men kicked it off, you know, kicked it off on Tuesday, November 28th and the 29th. And then the women did, did theirs the 29th and the 30th. So we're going to start off with the men because they started first. And then this is how it went. And it's crazy. So you had LSU and Syracuse, Mississippi State, Georgia Tech, Notre Dame, South Carolina, Miami, Kentucky, Missouri, and Pitt, NC State, Ole Miss, Thompson, Alabama. That's Tuesday. Wednesday, Lana was Tennessee, North Carolina, the big matchup of the, of the tournament. Then you had Texas A&M, Vanderbilt, Florida at Wake Forest, Duke at Arkansas, Virginia Tech at Auburn. Georgia at Florida State and the cap it off Boston College at Virginia. So let's get right into it and see how this thing went. All right. Mississippi State, the 21st Mississippi State. Bulldogs off with upset in the ATF by the Georgia Tech Yellow Jacket, 67 to 59, giving the ACC the 1 0 lead. But not too far after that, South Carolina had a business at home against Notre Dame, tying the series up 1 1. Then we go to the Q-Dome, up Syracuse, New York, as the Syracuse Orange Man hosted the LSU Tigers, dominating the Tigers, 80 to 57. ACC is up two to one. But then from the Q-Dome, we head down to Pittsburgh, PA, as the Pitt Panthers hosted the Missouri Tigers, and the Missouri Tigers came out of there with a big roll win, 71-64, tying the series up two two. This is Tuesday, November 28th. Sticking with Tuesday, November 28th, ladies and gentlemen. A big one down at Rupp Arena. It was the Miami Hurricanes ranked eighth in the country. Taking on the 12th ranked Wildcats of Kentucky. And boy, did, did Kentucky give Miami a butt whooping that Joe Norlega would never forget. SEC takes the 3-2 lead, first lead, of the first lead of the challenge. And then that lead increases. When Ole Miss stays undefeated against NC State, 72 to 52, making it 4 to SEC. And then it became 4 3 SEC because the Clemson Tigers remained undefeated as they went into Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and upset the 23rd ranked Crimson Tide, 85 to 77. So after day one, the SEC is up 4 to 3 going into Wednesday, November 29th. And speaking of Wednesday, November 29th, we had the Texas A&M taking on the Virginia Cavaliers, and that defense of the Virginia Cavaliers was stifling. The 14 ranked Aggies got upset 59 to 47, tying the series up four to four. And then North Carolina, Chapel Hill, a top fifth, a top 20 matchup, number 10, the Volunteers of Tennessee. Taking on the 17 ranked Tar Heels of North Carolina. What a display by the North Carolina Tar Heels. Credit to the Volunteers. They was down early. They was down huge early. They came fighting back. But, can, but North Carolina kept them at a distance. Thus winning 192. Highest scoring game of the ACC SEC tournament. Or challenge, should I say. The ACC takes a 5-4 lead. But that lead would increase. As the Wake Forest Demon Deacons hosted the Florida Gators. And in the second half, Wake Forest pulled away with a 82 to 71 victory over the Florida Gators. The ACC is up 6-4. I should say this. I should have said this at the beginning. The first to eight wins the challenge. Okay. That's what both men and first to eight wins the challenge. So you have 14 games. So you want to win eight to six. Okay. So with that being said, ACC is two away from winning the challenge until Duke went to Fayetteville, Arkansas. And met up with the Arkansas Razorback. The Arkansas Razorback upsetting seven ranked Blue Devils, 80 to 75, giving it a six five advance to the ACC with three games to go. Can the ACC take two out of three 
and can the AC, you know, the SEC take three in a row to win the challenge? And as we continue to move on, Boston College got the ACC one step closer, defeating Vanderbilt 80 to 62. The ACC 75. They just need one more. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. That's the Georgia Bulldogs went up to Tallahassee and they got out of Tallahassee with a win over the Florida State Seminoles, giving the ACC 76 lead. And then the final game of the men's ACC SEC challenge, the Auburn Tigers took on the Virginia Tech Cavaliers. And the home team of the Tiger led by Bruce Pearl put it on the Hoagies of Virginia Tech 74 to 57, thus ending the ACC SEC men's challenge to 7 7. We are at a standstill on the men's side of the first annual ACC SEC challenge. But they weren't the only ones. The ladies were up. And the ladies started off on Wednesday, November 29th. And they match up, started off with Notre Dame at Tennessee, Florida at Georgia Tech, Virginia at, no, Vanderbilt at NC State, Miami at Mississippi State, and Louisville at Ole Miss. This is how the women started off. Had five games on the first night of Wednesday, and then Thursday they had a they had a grand total of nine. Okay, so stick with me here. Kicking off on the women's side, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. We talked about Jaden Jaden Ivy's mom, right? Her team took the trip to Rocky Top to take on the 20th ranked Volunteers of Tennessee, and they came out victorious, 74 69. ACC is up one zero. And then the NC State Wolfpack, the fifth ranked NC State Wolfpack hosted Vanderbilt. And NC State gave Vanderbilt all they can handle because Vanderbilt had no answers. ACC's up 2 0. And then the upset of, and one of the big upsets of the tournament, the 21st ranked Mississippi State Bulldogs at home hosting Miami. And Miami walked in there and they walked out undefeated. The battle of the unbeatens went to the road team. 74 68. The ACC three nothing right now, and then the Gators put the SEC on the board with a 68 58 win over the Yellow Jackets. Shout out to my Lady Gators. My Lady Gators came through for me, got us on the board first. I enjoyed that. Good job, ladies. But then again, but right back to the ACC as the Louisville Cardinals, the 22nd ranked Louisville Cardinals. Went to Oxford, Mississippi against the 19 rank Old Miss Rebels and beat them 64 to 58. Thus ending Wednesday with the ACC having a full one lead. Another full win is going into Thursday, and the ACC will win the women's challenge. Let's see how Wednesday went because Wednesday had a lot of games. Oh, there are a whole lot of games on Wednesday. Let's get to it. Thursday, November 30th, we saw the Duke Blue Devils go into overtime in Nathan, Georgia with the Georgia Bulldogs. Carol Lawson led her Blue Devils, her Lady Blue Devils, to the 72-65 win over the Georgia Bulldogs, giving the ACC a 5-1 lead. And then in Virginia, we had the Virginia Cavaliers hosting the Missouri Tigers, and that game went into overtime with the Virginia Cavaliers coming out 86-81 win. The ACC is up 6 one. That's right. You seen it. Six, one. Two more wins by the ACC, and this challenge is done. And then it was the Battle of the Carolinas. The headline on the women's side. The number one team in the land, the South Carolina Gamecocks, in Chapel Hill to take on the 24th rank. Tie here's a North Carolina. North Carolina jumped out on top early on South Carolina, but South Carolina has been here, and they have done that before. And they saw themselves in the battle for the first time this season. But they are familiar with the battles because they was in a lot of battles last year. And they those battle-tested game cards and Don Stelly came through 65 to 58, dropping the ACC's lead from 6 to 1 to 6 to 2 on this one. And then the SEC continues to roll with the Arkansas Razorbacks upsetting 15 ranked Florida State Seminoles in Tallahassee. In dominant fashion, 71 to 58. It is 6 3 all of a sudden for the ACC. And then the league continues to strength because in Rupp Arena in Kentucky, in Lexington, Kentucky, 83 81. Wildcats over the Boston College Eagles. The league has gone from 6 to 1 to 6 to 4 and a snafu just like that. But we're not done yet. 
that's 10 games. We have four more on the docket. And with those four more, the Syracuse Orange, man, stop the bleeding of the ACC. They stopped the bleeding for the ACC, getting a big win over the Alabama Christian Tide, 79-63 at home, giving the ACC one more win to win in China. It is 7-4, 7-4. The ACC has three games to win. And then we saw the eight. Then we saw a Final Four rematch between the ninth-ranked Hoagies of Virginia Tech against the seventh-ranked LSU Tigers and the return of Angel Reese, ladies and gentlemen. The return of Angel Reese was much needed for the LSU Tigers. It was a back-and-forth game in the first half. And then the Lady Tigers took over. Yeah, they just took over. You know, Virginia Tech took the early seven-point lead in the after the first quarter. Then a 22 to 9 spurt in the second quarter by the Tigers. That's they took a 35 29 lead in the halftime. And then from that point forward, Virginia couldn't touch the LSU Tigers. Angel Reese came back with 19 points, nine rebounds in her return, doing her thing. Michaela Williams had 20 points to add on to it. And the seven ranked Tigers dominated, making it 7 5 ACC. But it wasn't over. The SEC continued to do things because the Auburn Tigers were at home hosting the Clemson Tigers. The Battle of the Tigers down in Auburn, Alabama, and a 30-point drubbing handed out by the Auburn Tigers to the Clemson Tigers, making it 7-6 ACC. A win, one more win for the ACC. That's all they need. They just need one more win. But they couldn't get it because Wake Forest hosted Texas A&M and another drumming. Of an SEC team with an ACC team as Texas AM Drummond's Wait for his Demon Deacons 81 to 57. That's the women's ACC SEC challenge ends in a 7 7 tie. And thus, ladies and gentlemen, the first annual ACC SEC challenge ends in ties in both the men's and the women's. No bragging rights will be handed out to either conference. As both conference saw their shares of upsets, saw their shares of dominations. Nevertheless, it all evened out for both the men and the women. 7-7 seven, seven tie as it is for the ACC SEC inaugural challenge. Okay. One final break. And when we come back, I got a heat check to give you from the NBA. We'll be back. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Cowboys Talk. The Dallas Cowboys got exactly what they deserved. Let me say that one more time, because you know it's true. The Dallas Cowboys got exactly what they deserved. Dak Prescott is overrated and he shouldn't be paid, okay? And the same thing with Pollard, I mean... Pollard bro- breaking the tackles at that 57-yard touchdown run. I mean, we oh, needed that beautiful. big time. 33 points in the fourth quarter. Let me say that again. 33 points in the fourth quarter. And that's off of four turnovers committed by the Colts. See, at one point, and the fact that at the end of the third quarter, it was 21-19, to and the final score was 54-19. to Now that, ladies and gentlemen, that is completely unexpected. Cowboys Talk is available on all streaming platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and YouTube. The Playmaker Spa is sponsored by Lids. Locker rooms by Lids. Shop hats and official sports gear at Lids. Lids, the leading and number one destination for hats, gears, and everything that moves you. Make it a perfect shop for fans to find official sports hats, merchandise, and gears. Represent your team, your town, and your style with a snap hat, adjustable, fitted hat, or beanie from thousands of college and professional teams. Browse the very latest jerseys and t-shirts for the best teams out there. Liz has officially licensed professional and college sports teams apparel and hats featuring the hottest brands and trends. Shop online or visit one of the 100 stores across the country. Lock them by Liz. 
LA Ram fans all over the nation, LA Ram fans all across the world. It took 21 years, but hey, the Rams are Super Bowl champions once again. Down at the Playmaker Silence here, longtime Ram fan, and the host of the R LA Rams podcast called Ramley Talk. On Ramley Talk, I tell you how it is. The good, the bad, the indifferent. Coming with straight facts, with war emotion, and authentic viewpoint on the Los Angeles Rams. Don't matter what era you grew up in, it could be the fifth and fourth era, the greatest show on turf era, and of course, the Super Bowl 56 champions that are currently the Rams. You can listen to Ramley Talk on all streaming platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and YouTube. So subscribe now and get all the content that you can get on the LA Rams. Horns up, Rams house, is LA Rams football. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The first heat check of the season. And it's the Orlando Magic, man. The Orlando Magic are the first heat check of shooting lights out this season. Well, it brings me great pleasure because I did not expect the kind of season that we're having right now. I, I'll be quite honest with you. But these boys are 13 and 5 right now. They are second in the East. I mean, 14 in points per game at 114, 16 in rebounding, 22nd in assists, and fifth, though. Fifth in opponents points per game they only give up 108 and that is fifth in the league these boys are playing defense i love it i didn't expect this type of start from this team this is the type of thing that i was looking for the detroit pisses to be on okay you see what the matches are doing detroit this is what detroit's supposed to have been okay this is what the the, the matches are doing what the pisses are supposed to be doing right now it brings me joy because i love I, y'all those who know me I am a Magic fan. Those of you who don't know me, y'all don't know because I don't really talk about my Magic like that because they usually are not worthy to be talked about on this program. But today, they are super worthy of this. They are 13-5, and five, second in the East, man. And let's just dive right into it, okay? In the month of December, 11-3 in the month of December, you only lost to the Dallas Mavericks, the Atlanta Hawks, and the Brooklyn Nets. The Brooklyn Nets North was part of the in, the in season tournament. The reason was why they was three and one in the in, in the in season tournament. Okay, the reason why they were three and one because they beat the Bulls. They beat I want to say the Charlotte Hornets and oh yeah, the Boston Celtics. A drubbing of the Boston Celtics, one thirteen to nine. This is ooh, just just beat them down at home in Elway Center. All right, I see you. I see you right now. Now, losing to the Mavericks at home and the Hawks at home, not good. Yes, you beat the Lakers at home. You beat the Denver Nuggets at home. You went to Indiana. You beat them. There's some good wins in here for Orlando. And they are 13 and 5 and 11 and 3 in the month of November. Not only that, not only that, they on an eight game winning streak. Back to back wins against the Chicago Bulls in Chicago. A win at Indiana. You beat Toronto at home. You came home and you beat the Denver Nuggets 124 to 119. The drumming that you did to the Boston Celtics 113 to 96. You beat the Charlotte Hornets. You did what you're supposed to have did to them. And you did what you're supposed to have done to the Washington Wizards. You're doing business. Detroit is not. That's why Detroit got the flagrant foul. And you getting the heat check. It could easily be the reverse because y'all got about the same amount of talent, which doesn't make any sense. But I love what all that matches will do. I love it. Eight game winning streak, 11 and three in the month of November, 13 and five overall, and you're second in the East. You're just a game behind the Boston Celtics. Look at that. Boston has only won two straight. Milwaukee lost one. Philly lost one. Knicks on the two game winning streak. Heat finally won. Look at this. Nowhere close to what they're doing. In the last 10 games, Orlando, nine and one. Better than Boston was eight and two. Milwaukee, eight and two. New York needs seven and three. Miami six and four. Cleveland six and four. These boys are handling business. And part of those eight, and part of those last ten at home, eight and two at home. They are handling business at home. They are handling business on the road when they can. It is a beautiful thing down in Central Florida right now. 
people in Orlando should be feeling good right now. They 13 to 3. But it's a long season. Though. It's a long season. So I'm going to pause right now. It's a long season. It's only 18 games. We still got about uh, 64 games to go. It's a long season right now. It's all good. Thus, you're not in part of the NCAA tournament no more. So you can just focus on racking up the wins like you're supposed to and keep riding on and doing what you're doing. But man, the faces of the of this magic team. First off, you know who who was the main face of the Atlanta Magic. That would be Paulo Bancari in his second year. They aka rookie of the year last year from the University of Duke. He's giving me 19 points a game. He's giving me six rebounds. He's giving me about five assists a game. Those are some stats that I need to see. Those are stats that I like to see from the star player. Okay. Now you're not in the 20s yet. Now, once we get you to the 20s in points per game, and then around about the eight, nine mark and rebounds, and then about Six to seven assist game, then you really gonna be up there. But you want to end your second year, Paula Banker. So I'm not gonna ask too much from you. You keep doing what you're doing for the face of the franchise, okay? Keep doing what you're doing, all right? But he's not the leading scorer for the franchise, though. Easy. He's not the leading. He's not the leading scorer of this team. That would be Frank Ratner, ladies and gentlemen. Frank Ratner giving you 20 points a game, giving you five to six rebounds a game, giving you a couple of assists, and he's a marksman from three. Okay, he is shooting the ball well from three. He is going to the hole, going aggressive to the hole. He's doing his thing right now. I love what Frank Ratt is doing right now. And I ain't even talking about his brother because his brother can come off the bench and do some of the same things as well. And even more down to make it in the post. So, but yeah, Frank Ratt, the leading scorer for the Orlando Magic, even though Paula Bancari is the face of the Orlando Magic. And then you have Cole Anthony. The son of Greg Anthony and Cole Anthony doing his thing, giving me about 16 point, 15 to 16 points a game, giving me about five rebounds a game, giving me about four assists a game. I like that for my shooting guard position, okay? You putting in the, putting the ball in the bucket. You addition out when you need addition out. And then when it's time to get in there to grab some rebounds, you get some rebounds, okay? I love what I'm seeing from the Orlando Magic right now. It's a beautiful thing. It's a very beautiful thing, man. Very beautiful thing. So I love what I'm seeing from my three stars right there. And then we the month of December, we got some games there, so. We can extend this running streak to nine with a win versus the uh, Washington Wizards at home tonight. Then we got to go to Brooklyn. We need to avenge that loss to see if we can do that. And then be at Cleveland. So those are two tricky games right there. So the streak can stop between, you know, tomorrow and December. So the streak can stop between those two games. Then we see the Detroit Pistons, who I just gave a flag and foul to. We should handle business. And we're at home. So we need to handle business to get there before Cleveland comes into town. And we see them. If we got back to back games at Boston, got a game at we got a game against Miami at Milwaukee at Indiana at Washington. The seventy six of the New York Knicks and at the Phoenix Suns to close out the year of twenty twenty three. But it's the, this stretch right here that I'm going to show y'all is what's interesting. From December eleven to December twenty third, just before Christmas, that's a gauntlet for the Orlando Magic, ladies and gentlemen. You're home to Cleveland, back-to-back games at Boston, home to the Miami Heat, at Milwaukee, and at Indiana, okay? That's a stretch. I want to see how Orlando comes out of that stretch. If Orlando can come out of that stretch, let's see, that's what? One, two, three, four, five, six. If they can come out of the stretch three and three, I feel good about my measure this season. If they come out of the stretch three and three, okay? I give them 500. They can come out of that six game going at three and three. I feel good about my measure. I ain't got nothing to worry about. That's rock and roll. That's handle business, all right? Let's do what we do. Okay, but like I said, I am loving what the Orlando Magic are doing. It's a beautiful thing. I hope it keeps going because this is a great time for Orlando Magic basketball right now, early in the season. And we didn't expect it to be this way. We didn't expect what we're seeing for the Orlando Magic right now. And they'd be all up, up and down sports center all of a sudden. I love it. Keep it going, Orlando. Keep it going. Let's keep it going, all right? Let's finish the year off right. Finish the year off right for me, all right? That's your heat check. The Orlando Magic doing their thing. Thank y'all for tuning in to the second episode of Shooting Lights Out on this December 1st, 2023. I appreciate it. Thank y'all for tuning in. Get at me. Let me know how you feel. Get me at on, on YouTube like y'all been doing or down there Playmaker Silence on Facebook. Let me know what you're doing. Let's talk basketball. Let's, talk, let's chop it up, man. So y'all have a good one on, this, on the beginning of the final month of the year. Make it a great month. I'll see you next time for more Shooting Lights Out talking basketball. All right, y'all have a good one. See ya. Good. You've done great. But you can't stop here. You can't stop now. 
You gotta keep going. Through all your trials and your tribulations, you gotta keep pushing. Now, finish your canvas. Yeah, gotta get it out the mud, that's the only way to win. Who am I to point the finger like I never ever seen? Been through the ups and downs like the letter in. They don't let you through the door, better kick it again. Cause that's the only way to win. That's the only way to go, gotta get it out the mud. Gotta get it out the flow. Cause that's the only way to go, let's go. Thank you for tuning in today's episode. If you want to follow the podcast, you can follow it on all streaming platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and a whole lot more. This has been Shooting the Lights Out. Masterpiece.